to our sisters and brothers and media practitioners and workers. Maayong pagkabot sa sipo. I believe that you come at a time when we should really rejoice because starting with the liturgy, we are invited to proclaim the greatness of the Lord. And in this opening ceremony of your Congress, we lift up this gathering to the Lord in an act of worship, joining the whole church in thanking God for the gift of Mama Mary. At the Feast of Our Assumption, you have come and certainly this should be a celebration of joy and the coming of the sharing of how we look at the goodness of the Lord and how we, like Mary, can proclaim that greatness. And a personal note, may I say again, thank you for choosing Sipu to be the venue for this campus. Last Saturday, we had a national gathering of the evangelizers coming from Luzon, besides the Mindanao, there were a little over 1,000 who, who gathered at in one place in Cebu and uh, they ended Sunday. Yesterday, the catechists you know, and uh, are also here at Chi Bisapaniari and of course the catechetical group of various dioceses. And today, you are friends, sisters and brothers, the major practitioners. I'm sure in the next today and of course uh, tomorrow, you will be hearing more good news from each other and certainly uh, ways to proclaim the good news to our sisters and brothers. For today, let me join you in thanking God, first of all, for the gift of our Mother Mary. The Church honors her because she is given to us as a mother and at the Feast of our Assumption, we know that we have reason to rejoice because as she has sung, the Lord has done marvels for her. A data, a piece of information about Mary and our beloved son Tunidio in Sipu. I say this because of course we all know that Mary is great because she is the mother of Jesus. Sometime during the war, for fear that due to bombardment, you know, the Santonian you might be destroyed, might be hit, knowing that the Basilica of the Santonian is near the sea, they thought of bringing him to a safer place. And guess where they brought him? To his mother, to the church of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. The Redemptorist Church. The logic was, who can better protect the child than her mother? Uh, it is documented, and that's why we were saying, see, even you know, uh, the Son of Daniel had to come to his mother, you know, to seek protection. Uh, I, I say this because usually among us, you know, when we think of Mary, we think her not only as the mother of Jesus, but our own mother too. I think as a people, we're, we're noted for being the Pueblo Amante de Maria, you know, for people who really love Mary. And the reason is because we you know Mary loves us too. This is this context that I thought, you know, we're happy to, to join our hearts and voices when the church, thanking God for the gift of Mary and in praising, of course, the, the virtues of Mary. Today, I just would like to underline a line, I should say, a, a thought in the gospel, just to bring home a point. I believe in a world that's often discontented, in a world that often seeks uh, more and, uh, and is not contented with what we have. 
that the song of Mary is a reminder. My soul glorifies the Lord. Hers is a song of thanksgiving. I believe we should pray for the gift to be able to say, I am enough. And I say thank you to the Lord for His goodness. It appears that a lot of people could not say, I am enough. They always want to have more and more. But Mary, in today's gospel, proclaims the greatness of the Lord. When we look at her life, we know how simple it was. She did not have all the amenities we have of the wealth of the world. And yet, her joy was pronounced knowing how good God is, how God worked such marvels. I say this because I believe as a people we may be poor and indeed we are poor. But I often repeat the words of the great Father Olasio de la Costa when he said that we are a poor country but we have two jewels. One of this is our faith and the other is our song. And he said something like as long as there is a priest uh, offering God to God at the altar and as long as there is a mother singing her lullaby we may be down trodden and, and we may be down and, and, and yet we will rise again and that's to show our jewel as a people we have, we have to thank the Lord for His goodness to us and this is the song of Mary and I believe uh, this too is a challenge for all of us if you think for a moment we are in Cebu and in the next you know, three years we will celebrate four years. The fifth centenary of the beginning of Christianity in our country. And I thought the gift of faith, you know, that we are blessed of is something we have to rejoice. But when we think of so many nations and we are number three in terms of number of Catholics. Brazil, Mexico, Philippines. After us are Spain, Italy, and France, and many others. You know, this too is something we have to thank the Lord for. If I think of, I often repeat this, uh, of, of how we were blessed with, with Filipino saints you know, in the last few years. Lorenzo Luis Pedro Calamso. If you think of the two biggest gatherings of a, of a people, when St. JP2 came to our country and when Francis, Pope Francis came the other year. This too is a gift. Uh, we should look at this as God's blessings, even in our poverty. I want to think of how we were devastated by an earthquake, you know, on uh, October 15, 2013, and the typhoon and November 8, and yet how now we were able to bounce back. That too is a gift. I'm saying this because I think when we are able to sing the song of Mary despite the many experiences we have had you know, that, that certainly are challenges, then, then we know, we reflect that, that faith of a people. My soul glorifies the Lord. I believe, like Mary, we are people who can bring joy and hope to others. And we know the reason why in the gospel, what great joy is he brought to his life. And we know the reason why, because in her is Jesus. In her is the way, the truth, and the life. I do believe, as major practitioners, as our Holy Father has so wonderfully reminded us during the readings, uh, the letter during Ascension Sunday, we can either bring the solid grain of truth and beauty and, and goodness or the staff of lies and, you know, and then hopelessness. We know what to do. And so my wish for all of you is knowing how much potentials you have and how much blessings you have, knowing what we can do to a people who are longing for peace and, and hope and joy. I pray with you that the Spirit, the same Spirit who has overshadowed Mary, 
The same spirit who has guided her and joined with her. The same spirit who prayed or inspired her to pray for the birth of the church. The same spirit who now welcomes her to heaven and, you know, in her assumption may be with us in, in a very special way. I would like to believe this gathering is certainly the work of the Spirit because as we often say in Sugwana, the katagbawan, you know, the, the fulfillment, you know, the, the answer to our thirst and longings of our people can only be found when Jesus is there, when God is in our midst. This too is my prayer for all of us.